Spellcasting 201, The Sorcerer's Appliance. Ah, uh, this was uh, a good follow-up to the first game. It was released in 1991. And if you couldn't tell by just the, the number part of the title, this was actually set in Ernie's second year at Spellcasting U. I can understand why some people might not get that. You know, when I was in college, I didn't necessarily fully grasp the... how they number classes. I mean, yeah, it, it makes sense to a degree. But... This game also takes place over the course of a week. So it's a very fast-paced week. I mean, of course, things have progressed since the time of the first game. Uh, we have uh, pre the president from the first game has mm, left office and... I don't know, maybe he was killed during the invasion from, last, from the last game, but uh, now... Professor Otto Ticking Clock is now president of the college, of the university. And Ernie is pledging to a frat. Now, of course, this being your typical poke fun at college type thing, you have uh, certain names for the fraternities and the sororities that you will run across. You know, stuff like uh, Tapa Kega Brew. Or I Felt a Thigh. Ernie pledges to Who Dealt, uh, to who dealt a Fart. And uh, uh, let's just say he is not uh, looked upon favorably by uh, the pledge master there, Chris Cowpatty. Yeah, that's his name. He's named for shit. Now, of course, like I said, the game takes place over a week. In fact, uh, we open the game on a Sunday. Where, of course, we open with Ernie practicing in a simulation that is very reminiscent of Spell of uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice. And it's just before Pledge Week, which is important. I mean, this is the kind of, this was set up as the kind of, in order to pledge to a fraternity or sorority, you have to go through a week of doing crazy stunts. You had the day to get it done in. In fact, you can find out what the stunts are because for some reason, Either that the guys were the the Chris wasn't thinking anything or didn't even think about it. Uh, Ernie's room has a vent that leads right to wherever Chris is plotting these things out, so you can get an idea of what you're going into on the next day. But but it also Professor. Auto Ticking Clock has given you a task. You see, at the uh, end of the first game, we had the Sorcerer's Appliance. Now, of course, it all had its attachments, great attachments. But there are greater attachments, six in total, I believe. So now you are t 
tasked with fig finding the attachments and figuring things out. This is not going to be necessarily easy. Of course, Auto tells you that, in fact, some of it may be very important to him, Otto himself, as well as the future of the university. And he's not wrong. So, over the course of the week, you are figuring out the secrets of the Sorcerer's Appliance. You are com you are completing your pledging tasks. And, yeah, you got to attend some classes. It's actually important that you attend classes while you can. So we then go into day one, Monday. So you will have to attend some classes. Most importantly, I would say, well, uh, some of the classes will have information you'll need later. So, of course, you want to follow your uh, schedule pretty closely for the first two days. Or use a walkthrough that tells you what classes you really need to worry about. I mean, you're going to have to know your mood horn. And that class is on Tuesday. It's also important that you attend your alchemy class. Which is being taught by a, what seems to be a rather new professor... Bruce Hiddenmuller. I believe that's his first name. He's not too kind, doesn't look too kindly on Ernie. Of course, this could also be brushed off that the alchemy class is a more advanced class, usually reserved for juniors and, or, and higher. You can tell that by its number. Now, of course, you also, but it's also the first day and you get a pledge task. Uh, one of your pledges must, well, he's got to uh, disrupt one of the classes. I think by playing the bagpipes. No, I think, no, that was another, but another one must skydive into a, or cause a ruckus during uh, a concert. And you must put a giant mustache on a big statue. A statue that has apparently been greased up so that you can't climb it. Well, of course, now the, the appliance each day can give you some that can do something or that can help you later, including getting off campus or giving you something that will aid you, maybe a particular plant, maybe a particular animal. Each day, you when you unlock something with one of the special appliance, greater appliance, uh, pen, adapt, adapters, uh, it unlocks a new feature. Well, obviously, you go through the day, you get everything together, you get even get done with the item that you need to do and once the day is done and you of course at the end of the day nine o'clock or when they say you have to have the pledges done by it don't matter where you are or anything the whole fraternity will come and grab you and drag you back to the uh, ceremonial room, you know, in the basement. 
it don't matter where you are. I kid you not. My one playthrough, I was still stuck in the sewers. Yes, you do have to go into the sewers at some point in this game. Under the school. But yes, they found me down there and dragged me back. I mean, if they're able to do this from anywhere, honestly, they got to be using some serious magic. And of course, your day will, quote, end with, of course, the dudes, pledge one, get, the, get this done, yes. Did Pledge 2 get this done? Yes. Did, ple did Pledge er Eagle Beak get this done? He's hoping for no. Yes, I got it done. It, what? So then dismiss everyone. You know, you're just a step closer to being a full-fledged fart. And then... We go on to the next day. Of course, you know, night before, you listen at the event, get an idea of what's going on. So, Tuesday. You must steal the, fu the, <laughs> the uh, mascot from another fraternity. The mascot is a big elephant-like creature. I think it's called an elephant. El ele the task is basically you must uh, snatch the, the thing from the from the ba from the basement of the frat house not being detected of course. And there's a way to do that. And you're supposed to sneak this thing into profe to the president's house. Professor, you know, President Otto Ticking Clock's house. In the room with his uh, young, beautiful wife, Hillary. Who will probably have some ideas on what to do with an... Of elephant. Of course, this means uh, quote shrinking the 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 shrinking. This basically involves shrinking the elephant. The shrinking the damn thing. Taking it through the sewers to get it out. Of course, you also have to make sure that the guy watching it is uh, conveniently sloshed. And get it there. Of course, you go through the hole. And like I said, what the important class you really have to attend on this day is uh, the, the mood horn. It's important. Especially for uh, for day three's task. Now, once you, of course, get the creature to its location, then they do then do the uh, you know farts come out of nowhere wherever you're at and drag you off and. Go through, did Pledge 1 do, yep, did Pledge 2, yep, did er Pledge Eagle Beak do the task? Yes, I did. This also involves buck, uh, calling like a chicken, because of course the Pledge Master is dressed as a chicken. So now he's got trying to really think up the, the crazy shit. The difficult stuff. 
And he thinks he comes up with a good one. It's also at this point that we go into Wednesday and uh, we find out the consequences of our one action. Uh, yeah, auto ticking clock did not take too kindly uh, to seeing the elephant, uh, the uh, uh, elephant, of elephant, uh, whatever you call it, uh, in the uh, in uh, the bedroom with Hillary. It causes his heart to stop. Hmm. That's a problem, because now the Board of Trustees must pick a new president, and there's four names in the running. I won't bother going through all the names, except for the most important name in this whole story storyline, and that is Hiddenmuller, the new alchemy professor. Yeah, he's not going to be a front-runner, right? <laughs> Well, Ernie also gets uh, his task for this day. He is supposed to get the whole of, I think, Tapakega Brew? I think so. He must get all of them to jump in the pool during their toasting ceremony. Yeah, that's not going to be easy. Because one, they're not going to let him in. Unless he can get in there before things start. And then he's got to make sure they all, you know, do it. You know, all jump in. Including the speech maker. Now this is where the mood horn comes in. I should also note that we now have, since uh, the, the, pre the president is dead, um, they've canceled classes for the rest of the week until he pick a new president. Well, Ernie uses his mood horn playing to, and as well as a special little potion to successfully play a tune that makes everybody so hot they all jump in the pool during the during the speech. Works out even better than that because hey, they thought this was a great thing to do, so they want to do it every year from now on. Of course, this is also while Ernie's trying to figure out things with the uh, with the appliance and getting all the things he needs. And yes, he succeeds. Of course, much to Chris Cowpatty's uh, chagrin. So now Chris is, has to think up a more t another task that is supposed to be even more difficult. He actually has thought up of one involving nearby uh, sorority barmaid you. You know, they've got a bunch of sororities and for uh, college. I mean, they've got a bunch of colleges here that are specific for a certain line of work. Sor sorcerer you, barmaid you. I forget what else they had in the game, but I mean, all these, you know. Now, of course, uh, the task is uh, to give uh, Ernie a difficult task. So he must now get to Barmaid You and that at their annual welcome back or something like that party or mixer. They're supposed to. He's supposed to spike the punch. Of course, the place is being. Uh, the this is place is being under security. 
to prevent any, quote, guy from spiking the punch. Or any uninvited guests from spiking the punch. So obviously Ernie can't do it himself. Believe it or not, this is where one of the most <laughs> uh, somewhat pointless, if you want to look at it that way, somewhat uh, not too pointless tasks is of the appliance. The appliance actually has a function, once you get the right attachment for on it, to create life. And it just so happens that it will create a female. Yep, Ernie creates a girl. I mean, the dials pretty much are in there and are set to what would be called an hourglass figure. You can select the hair color, I believe the eye color. Nothing about skin color, sorry. I know, that just, uh, it's one of those things. The only thing Ernie is being given is, of course, the item to spike the punch with and a one-day pass to leave campus. So obviously Ernie must do everything he can to one get one get there two get a ticket to the party three somehow get the get into the party and spike four spike the punch. Uh, luckily, uh, the lady we have created has somehow gotten an inane inane sense to one please her creator. I want to say that this is uh, very, very, uh, I'd like to say part of it is more or less a sign of the times. And part of it is somewhat logical. I mean, let's face it, as kids, we want to make our parents happy. That's something we all probably strove for. And if you didn't, well, you know, I can't speak for you, obviously. But she also has innate skills that are, well, let's say that for years have been more assigned to the female gender. However, uh, as we go through the task and she helps us, of course, get in and uh, she spikes the punch for us. Because the punch is being, you know, guarded by the top-notch security guys, and they're not about to let anybody, you know, mess with the party. You know, that's their their directions. They're kind of a shoot first and ask questions of the corpse later, type thing. Of course, once everybody's drunk. Well, they not gonna, they're not wanting to shoot first. I'll tell you that. You know the stereotypical drunken hijinks at the at the at the college party type stuff, that kind of thing that happened in those movies back then. Anyhow, uh, once that is done, and you get back, of course, the whole farts, you know, catch you, drag you down on a Thursday and tell it's like did yes did yes did Ernie yes what so, so now it's Friday oh it should also be noted that Wednesday 
during the course of you know Thursday morning you find out that uh, two of the nominees have had mysterious accidents happen that are not suspicious at all yeah if they're not uh, they're not suspicious yes yeah, somebody caused it I mean, let's face it, Ernie's plot armor ain't that thick. No, everybody's plot armor ain't that thick. <laughs> so now, Friday, we're down to two nominees. One of which is Bruce Hiddenmuller. And now they have another task. Where, you know, typical insane stuff that are, is either for the regular pledges. Oh, this will be simple. Not too crazy. Not too crazy. I think one has to, you know, streak, uh, maybe streak uh, Otto's funeral services. Ernie, however, must somehow moon the queen at her parade. Well, that's a problem. Oh, and they're not going to give him a pass to leave the grounds this time round. Well, luckily, by this point, we have found a, another neat function of the Saucer's Appliance where one can look like someone else. So, of course, Ernie takes on the image of one of the professors to leave the grounds. And we head to town. And we find a lot of gold. We also find Ernie's childhood crush, Lola Tigerbelly. Yeah, she doesn't remember the part you play in rescuing her in the first game. Until you show her money, then she'll remember you clearly. But it allows you to get in to uh, see, uh, get a ticket to see the parade. And of course, once you're there and the queen comes by, you moon her and get thrown in jail. Of course, you use some magic somehow and one of the spells will actually bring a person to where their image is. This sort of impresses her. She actually liked the idea that you had the, the Gahonis to, to moon her. And she rewards you with a personal visit to her boudoir. Well, she is supposed to be called Queen Libido, I think. Why? Because that was the humor of the time. Of course, you have to grab the important item before you have any fun because you're going to have to get the hell out of there fast once you had your fun. Um, and this is the most important adapter for the appliance, for the saucer's appliance because it will unlock necromancy mode. Of course, once you arrive there to initiate necromancy mode, We enter the end game, and of course we have bomb, bomb, bomb coming in to stop you from doing anything. Hidden Molar and Chris Cowpatty, and shock of it all, Hidden Molar isn't really Hidden Molar. He's your evil stepfather, Joey Rottenwood. Bum, bum, bum. 
we have your dramatic exposition of what he's going to do. He's going to use the Sorcerer's Appliance mode to transform into the only rival left. Have them go go in there and claim he is, uh, quote, not, does not want to take the job and take himself out of the running. Not as Hidden Muller, but as the other guy. Leaving Hidden Muller the only option. And then once he takes control of the college, he, the university, he will disband it. <laughs> and of course, in typical villainish fashion, uh, he is going to basically lock you in there, taking that last part of the appliance with him, so you can, but allow you to watch his plan unfurl. Because it is villainous exposition. Of course, uh, with everything you have there, you should be able to, that one, escape unnoticed. Two, get to where the trustees are meeting. Sneak in. Get hit, you know, get Hidden Muller's body out of there, past the magical protection field that prevents magic being used. Uh, you should have also cast a special spell, causing constipation. Because if you remember in the first game, Joey got defeated by a massive ton of whale shit and uncontrollable diarrhea so Ernie of course gets hidden molar uh, gets uh, will get auto ticking clock get the apply the attachment back for the saucer's appliance Yay! Get back to the appliance. You know, get the body all in there and uh, successfully defeat. You know, revive auto ticking clock. Get back in time, of course, to stop Rottenwood from getting it, getting the uh, item. Of course, at that time, the constipation spell wears off. Everybody has to use the toilet and a massive backup, and boom! Shit shoots out and basically defeats Joey Rottenwood again. And Ernie is now moving on to his junior year after, you know, becoming part of Who Dealt a Fart. And that ends the game. This was actually a fine follow-up for the, for the, to the first game. It kept things going. And uh, it makes you wonder what they were going to do to follow that one up. But we'll get to that when I get through playing Spring Break once again. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed me talking about this game and hope you even give it a try for yourself. It's a good game. And until next time, I wish you all take care and have fun. This is Rich Kale, Rich Gen X Elsewhere. Bye!